A video has come out showing a discussion between Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates. They discussed a wide range of topics, including artificial intelligence and the threat posed by deep fakes, India's technological advancements and climate change. The Indian PM also acknowledged the role of women in embracing new technologies in the country. India's External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar met with his Ukrainian counterpart Dmitro Kuleba today. The officials met on the second day of Kuleba's visit to New Delhi. Both the ministers discussed matters related to bilateral partnerships. Taiwan's Navy Chief Tang Hua will reportedly visit the United States next week. This comes to this is to attend a military ceremony and discuss bilateral naval cooperation. The potential meeting comes amid rising threats on Taiwan from China. The report added that the Chinese Foreign Ministry expressed its firm opposition to the meeting. Russia has vetoed the United Nations renewal of a panel of experts who were monitoring North Korea's compliance with international sanctions. The Russian move follows accusations from the United States, South Korea and other nations who have accused Pyongyang of supplying weapons to Moscow to use them in its war in Ukraine. Both Russia and North Korea have denied the accusations. The International Court of Justice has ordered Israel to halt the spread of famine in Gaza. It has demanded that Israel take all necessary and effective action to ensure basic food supplies uh, to the enclave's Palestinian population. The ICJ has also asked the country to submit a report in a month. This is, on how, uh, this is to detail how it has adopted the ruling. Pro-Palestinian protesters entered the Department of Business and Trade in London today, yesterday. The demonstrators were calling on the British government to end arms sales to Israel. They staged a sit-in protest in the lobby of the building, unfurling Palestinian flags and chanting slogans. U.S. President Joe Biden hosted a star-studded election fundraiser in New York City. Biden hosted this alongside his predecessors, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton. His team said that the event would raise over $25 million for the campaign, which is a record for a single political event. Argentinian President Javier Millet has stirred a controversy yet again. This was after he called his Mexican counterpart, uh, Manuel López Ob uh, Obrador, ignorant. He made the comment during a recent interview with a media network. Following this, Obrador lashed out at Millet on, over a post on social media platform X. His post read, and I quote, I still do not understand how Argentines, being so intelligent, voted for someone who despises the people. Canada sent a helicopter to its embassy in Haiti to evacuate its staff. The helicopter was seen landing at the Canadian embassy in Port-au-Prince as soldiers guarded the building. Foreign departures from Haiti have increased in recent weeks. This comes as the future of Haiti has reached a stalemate amid escalating gang violence. South Korea's former president, Jacob Zuma, has been barred from standing in the elections in May. This is according to the country's election commission. South Africa's uh, constitution does not allow an individual convicted for more than a year to hold public office. In July 2021, Zuma was sentenced to 15 months in jail for contempt of court. South Africa is set to go to general elections on May 29th. At least 45 people have died in a bus, bus crash in South Africa. The country's transport department said that the driver lost control and collided with the barriers on a bridge. This caused the bus to jump over the bridge and hit the ground where it caught fire. Senegal's president-elect Basiru Diomaye Faye and his political partner Usman Sonko met the outgoing president Macky Sall yesterday. This comes as Faye is headed, headed to become Africa's youngest ever elected president. He won over 54% of the vote in Senegal's presidential election this month, defeating Sall's hand-picked successor Amadou Ba. 
more than a hundred kidnapped Nigerian students were welcomed back uh, home in Kaduna yesterday. This is after they were freed by the army earlier this month. Large crowds gathered to celebrate their return. Last Sunday, the Nigerian army rescued 130 of the 187 students and staff who were abducted by gunmen. On Monday, the freed students arrived at the state government house, and yesterday they were finally able to unite with their loved ones. In climate news, at least 11 people have been killed due to a cyclone in Madagascar. Cyclone Gamane made landfall in the East African country yesterday. Hundreds of houses were also destroyed in the disaster. Britain's greenhouse gas emissions fell by 5.4% in 2023. This is according to official British government data. Power stations reportedly used less gas to generate electricity last year. Greenhouse gases are considered one of the main causes of climate change. The UK aims to reach net zero emissions by 2050. Meanwhile, open landfills are also one of the top drivers of global warming. This is according to a study published in the US-based Science Journal. The study says that decades worth of trash in landfills is releasing methane into the atmosphere. Methane's warming effect is 80 times stronger than that of the same amount of carbon dioxide. A new research study published in the journal Nature has found that global warming is threatening flora and fauna living in 17 mountain ranges around the world. These mountains are in Northeast Asia, the Brazilian highlands, Western America and Mexico and the Mediterranean basin. The report says that plant, plant and animal species living in these mountain ranges face the threat of extinction. The report calls for setting up monitoring stations in these areas to better understand the extent of the risk. Two of the world's leading humanitarian organizations, the Red Cross and the U.S. Agency for International Development, or USAID, have raised alarms about extreme heat. They say that extreme heat is one of the most dangerous problems arising from climate change. However, it receives less attention than hurricanes and flooding. Red Cross and, the, and USAID are calling on governments to help communities around the globe suffering from extreme heat. The warning comes out amid reports that 2023 was the hottest year on record. 30 specimens of a nearly extinct plant called the Cottonista cambricus has been planted in a secret location in Wales. The replanting was overseen by environmentalists. The Cottonista cambricus was once common in Wales but is on the verge of extinction due to overcollection and grazing. But decades of conservation efforts have raised its population. The U.S. government has restored rules that allow them to classify plant and animal species as endangered. This offers the species protection from economic activity in their habitats. These rules were dropped in 2019 by former U.S. President Donald Trump. On to business and tech news, Sam Bankman-Fried, the co-founder of bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange FTX, has been sentenced to 25 years in prison. Bankman Fried is being convicted for stealing over $8 billion from FTX customers. The crypto exchange collapsed in 2022 due to financial mismanagement and a liquidity shortage, which resulted in the firm's customers losing billions of dollars. Bankman Fried was also found guilty of illegally using FTX customer deposits for his own expenses. Bankman Fried plans to appeal this conviction. Four school boards in Canada have filed a lawsuit against social media firms like Meta, TikTok and Snapchat. The school boards have alleged that these social media firms have harmed students with their products. They have said that these products are addictive and have changed the way children think, behave and learn. School boards are demanding over $2.9 billion in damages from these firms. Users of the social media platform X will soon be able to use its premium features for free. That is, if the users have over 2,500 verified followers, 
This is according to the firm's owner, Elon Musk. Musk also said that accounts with over 5,000 verified followers will get free access to Premium Plus features. Last year, X, formerly known as Twitter, rolled out different paid subscription plans. These plans offer users perks like verification check marks and extended post length. Meanwhile, Elon Musk's artificial intelligence startup XAI has unveiled the new version of its chatbot Grok. The new AI chatbot is called Grok 1.5. As per the firm, it offers better performance in tasks like coding and math problems. Grok 1.5 will be available for existing users on, so on the social media platform X. The U.S. has said that it will partner with Mexico to explore semiconductor supply chain opportunities in the country. The collaboration will be part of America's CHIPS Act, which was passed in 2022. The law proposes a $500 million fund to develop the semiconductor supply chain with American allies. The new partnership aims to reduce the country's reliance on China and Taiwan for the supply of semiconductor chips. Meanwhile, the U.S. is preparing a list of Chinese chip factories. These factories will reportedly be banned from receiving any chip-making tools from U.S. companies. The country has already barred U.S. firms from shipping equipment to Chinese factories that produce advanced chips. However, there were no clear guidelines of which factories to avoid. For the last few years, the U.S. has been trying to restrain China's te technological advancement in the chip sector over national security concerns. China's property developer Country Garden has delayed the release of its 2023 financial results. The firm has said that it needs to collect more information to make appropriate accounting estimates. If Country Garden fails to release its annual results before April 2nd, its shares will be suspended from trading on Hong Kong Stock Exchange. This comes amid mounting pressure on the property developer. Last year, Country Garden defaulted on an $11 billion foreign debt payment. Chinese smartphone maker Xiaomi has launched its first electric car, the SU7. The car's price starts at about 30,000 US dollars. From April this year, the firm also plans to offer upgraded versions of the car called the SU7 Pro and SU7 Max. For now, the cars will only be sold in China. German airline Lufthansa has agreed to hike the wages of its ground staff. The firm will provide an 18% pay hike to roughly 25,000 workers. The deal is expected to end months of dispute between Lufthansa and the Airline Workers Union. In the past, the dispute led to a number of strikes at German airports. U.S. carrier Alaska Air has said that the grounding of its Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets may impact its profits in the long term. The firm said that its profits may fall below the range of 4 to 8 percent due to the groundings. In January, Alaska Airlines temporarily grounded all of its 737 MAX 9 planes. This was after one of the jet's doors, uh, door panels blew out mid-air. Moving to sports, we start with cricket and the IPL. Yesterday, the Rajasthan Royals secured a thrilling 12-run victory over the Delhi Capitals. Rajasthan were batting first and posted 185 for 5 in 20 overs. Riyan Parag starred for the Royals. He scored 84 runs of 45 balls. Delhi started well. The David warner rishabh Pant partnership added 67 crucial runs. But they wasted opportunities in the late overs and were restricted to 173 for 12. Despite the loss, Captain Rishabh Pant became the first player in IPL history to feature in 100 matches for Delhi Capitals. Pant made his IPL debut for De Delhi in 2016 and has stuck with the team ever since. After yesterday's match, he has now amassed 2,856 runs for the franchise. In football, Brazil's Dani Alves appeared before a court in Barcelona yesterday. Alves was convicted of raping a woman in Barcelona in 2022, but he was released from jail earlier this week after posting bail worth over a million dollars. He is appealing the rape conviction and must regularly appear in court as part of the bail conditions. 
Manchester City host Arsenal for a blockbuster Premier League clash this Sunday. Ahead of that crucial contest, City have been dealt a double blow. Defenders Kyle Walker and John Stones have been injured while on duty with England. As a result, both of them missed City's training session yesterday. In tennis, men's world number two Carlos Alcaraz has crashed out of the Miami Open. The Spaniard fell 6-2, 6-4 to Bulgaria's Grigor Dimitrov in the quarterfinal. Dimitrov won 77% of his first serve points to subdue Alcaraz. The Bulgarian will next face German fourth seed Alexander Zverev. Men's world number four, Elena Rybakina, survived a gritty semi-final test at the Miami Open. She defeated Victoria Azarenka 6-4-0-6-7-6 yesterday to make it to the finals. Rybakina's, uh, Rybakina will next take on unseeded American Danielle Collins in the final on Saturday. Indian tennis star Rohan Bopana and his Australian partner Matthew Abden are through to the finals of the men's doubles at the Miami Open. They beat Spain's Marcel uh, Granolas and Argentina's Horacio uh, Zeballos 6-1, 6-4 in the semi-finals. Bobana had earlier dropped to the second spot in doubles rankings after a loss at the Dubai Championships. This victory will help him reclaim the top rank. In badminton, ace Indian shuttler PV Sindhu is through to the quarterfinals at the Madrid Spain Masters 2024. She secured a comfortable 21 14 21 12 win over Huang Yu Sun of Chinese Taipei yesterday. The clash lasted just 36 minutes. Sindhu next faces world number 17, Supanida Katetong of Thailand, in the final eight. Indian Javelin champion Neera Chopra will kick-start his 2024 season in May. He will feature at the Doha Diamond League. It's an annual series of athletic competitions comprising of various disciplines. Chopra last took to the field in the 2023 Asian Games. Poland will be sending troops to France for the upcoming Paris Olympics. Warsaw said it will join international efforts to protect the Paris Games from any security risks. The task force from Poland will include soldiers and sniffer dogs. France has issued its highest terror alert in light of last week's attack in Moscow. In entertainment news, film director Christopher Nolan is set to receive a knighthood from Britain. The British government said this is to recognize Nolan's contribution to the film industry. Meanwhile, his producer uh, and wife, uh, Emma Thomas, will receive a damehood, which is the female equivalent of a knighthood. The couple worked on last year's blockbuster film, Oppenheimer. The film claimed seven victories at the recently concluded Oscar ceremony, where Nolan won the Academy Award for Best Director. Meanwhile, Oppenheimer has finally premiered in Japan eight months after its global release. The film screening was delayed in Japan as it was released just two weeks before the anniversary of the 1945 atomic bombings. The bombings took place in the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki during the final days of World War II. Oppenheimer revolves around the American physicist who developed the first atomic bomb. Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt's daughter, Shiloh, has reportedly expressed a desire to live with her father. This comes amid the ongoing divorce proceedings between the Hollywood uh, star couple. The 17-year-old currently lives with her mother in Los Angeles. However, she is reportedly eyeing uh, to relocate to Pitt's $8 million mansion. American actor Kristen Stewart has revealed details about her engagement ring in a recent interview. She said her fiancé, the screenwriter Dylan Meyer, proposed to her with a vintage-inspired ring. Stewart also talked about her wedding plans. The actor said she'll postpone her wedding till she completes directing her film, The Chronology of Water. The movie is an adaptation of a memoir by American author Lydia Yuknavich. Yukna American actor Arnold Schwarzenegger has provided an update to his fans after undergoing an open-heart surgery. Sharing a photo from the recovery, he thanked his fans for their kind messages. 
The actor said he'll be ready to film season two of his action series Fubar in April. Schwarzenegger underwent his fourth open heart surgery last week. American singer Camilla Cabello has released her single, I Love It. This is the lead song of her upcoming uh, fourth studio album. The 27-year-old also unveiled a music video for her brand new track that features the rapper Playboy Carti. The album marks a new era for Cabello, who has deleted all her social media posts before the album's release. The latest edition of the Universal Superstar Awards were held in Seoul yesterday. The award for the Universal Super uh, soundtrack went to K-pop girl group New Jeans and their song called Ditto. Meanwhile, K-pop boy band BTS's V won the trophy for Universal Super Artist. The boy group 17's song FML was named the Universal Super Music Album. The much-awaited K-drama, inspired by the lives of BTS members, will release next month. The show, titled Begins Youth, has been in production since 2020. While its filming was wrapped up in 2021, the series has seen multiple delays. The makers of the show have still not announced the show's exact release date. American footballer Travis Kelsey recently played air guitar to a song of uh, his rumored girlfriend Taylor Swift. He lip synced uh, Swift's single Bad Blood while playing golf. Kelsey's video was shared on social media by former basketball player Chandler Parsons, who apparently blasted Swift's song in the background to distract Kelsey during the game. American rapper Curtis James Jackson, popularly known as 50 Cent, has denied that he sexually assaulted his former girlfriend Daphne Joy. Last week, Joy took to Instagram to accuse 50 Cent of rape and physical abuse. However, 50 Cent said she leveled the allegations because he was seeking sole custody of their son. The pair dated in 2011 before welcoming their son in 2012. However, they broke up shortly after and Joy got uh, uh, custody over their son.